The following is a world class bullshit is exclusive. Welcome to World Class Bullshitters, the epitome of pop culture. I'm your host, Jeff Hicks, and with me tonight is Big Rig Nick Utam. Baby, baby, don't bet your hedges. <laughs> Just trim them. Yeah, yeah, definitely do that. Yeah, don't <laughs> don't bet them though. I don't know why you do that. It's it's May. Trim, don't bet. <laughs> That'd be a really dumb T-shirt. Trim, don't bet. <laughs> Wait, that could be really implied sexually. Trim, don't. Yeah, there you go. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Maybe I should have that shirt come out on May twenty fifth for double or nothing. There you go. <laughs> And finally, the king of the wicker people, Kendo Slice. I'm the man with no tan and uh, pigs' pussies and uh, 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 fuck uh, 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 Monday Night Quarterback. <laughs> I love Dion. <laughs> I almost love this show just as much without Dion because you can say his catchphrases. Right, all fifty-eight of them. Yeah. Oh God! Don't honey dick me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There's my contribution to the show. So. If you're listening to this, you realize that it is not live, it is not Thursday night. That is because uh, we had something come up this Thursday night with Bounding in the Comics, so we wanted to record this show early because you know, World Class Bullshitters is built on this podcast. This is episode 172 of the show. So we've been doing this since October of 2015. We're going to keep on rolling. We love doing it. And um, we don't really like to have weeks where there are gaps in the channel, so... That is why we're doing it now. Okay. We have a whole podcast in store for you guys. So uh, let me check to see if we have new patrons. I believe we do, actually. So just because we're recorded doesn't mean we're not going to give the proper respect to all of our patrons. So first off, give a shout-out to uh, Jano, Brent Cody, uh, Rodney Chenveret, uh, sorry, Rodney Chenveret, uh and Kevin Spacey, um. as well as Rich Bickle and Dan M., Thank you, Mr. Spacey. Well, yeah, Kevin, um... <laughs> put it like this. Our friend Kevin Spacey joined at the $1 level, and then he joined, jumped to the $10 level because he has a special question slash request for us. Okay. So, All right. Is it, that something we can say on air? Because I'm not really big on trafficking. No, don't, don't, actually, don't worry. Kevin Spacey okay. had a nice comment. It says, hey, guys, I love the content. For my $10 pledge, I would like to request a topic for discussion. Who would you rather, Rachel McAdams or Jamie Alexander? So we're going to put that on After Hours tonight. Okay. Yeah, we're going to get into that. We also have our friend Darth Fatass who came up with a great... <laughs> uh, yeah, Darth Fatass has been a long-time listener, dude. Uh, he has a great ING title. For uh, Remember last week's game? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Salvador came up with another one of mine, or another one for mine. Remember how I had uh, Schindler's Listing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He had another one <laughs> for Shaco oh, and Schindler's Listing. It was on the High Council, so folks, if you're listening to this, you'll have to go check out the end of the High Council and catch that. I don't remember exactly what Salvador said, but it was a lot of fun, and uh, I'm glad you guys like the ING game. Next week when we're live, I have a whole other game planned out for everybody. So, tonight, um, you know what? Let's start out something different. Guys, what's new in your worlds? Nick, what's new with you? Uh, nothing, man, you know. Still maintaining my channel, Real Independent Productions, Real with Tui's Because Film Pun. Uh, go check it out. Uh, give me a like, give me a subscribe, you know, listen to my stuff. Uh, every Friday I put out a pod, uh, an episode of, pod, of my podcast called Scary Drunk, where me and my friend Scotty get drunk and talk about independent horror movies. So, yeah, that's what's, that's what's up with me. What did you guys put out this past Friday? Uh, this past Friday um, was um, Toxic Avenger 4, Citizen Toxie. Uh, probably the most offensive movie ever made you you could not show it to anybody they would their mind would explode you know especially in today's you know uh society like their mind would just explode because the first uh five minutes is literally the diaper mafia um killing retarded kids in a, in a, in a retarded school <laughs> so it's offensive in a fun way or offensive yeah. in like okay because Tales from the Hood too is one of the most offensive movies I've ever seen, but not in a good way. No, no, no. This is offensive in like obviously it's offensive kind of way. Like Sergeant Kabuki Man is all is always drunk and always trying to you know like rape chicks. Like that's something that happens in the movie all the time. Damn. Yeah, that's yeah. dark. Yeah, yeah, this is also that this was made in two thousand. <laughs> oh, so uh, yeah, back when you could get away with that type of shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and, and it's and it's Troman, it's Lloyd Kaufman, so you know he can do whatever the hell he wants. Yeah. So. Well, it's a different kind of universe altogether. That's very true. Kendo, what's new in your world? Uh, not a whole lot. Um, 
doing footballs deep with uh, Jesse Milestone from Mindless Entertainment. Remember, boys, just the tip to score. And, uh, yeah, we did our uh, fourth episode yesterday, and uh, it's something we're going to keep going with. We have a lot of fun with it. Uh, I think yesterday was our most profitable episode. I think we made actually 12 bucks in Super Chats. So, Woo! You know, that's right. We decided that that money is going to be invested into a fund for when the two of us get together, we can pretty much just drink beer and watch a football game together or something like that. So, uh, yeah, that's our plan. So we're doing something. We got some stuff going on with that. And uh, I got some other things in the hopper I'll tell you guys about that I've been working on for our channel. Boom. I always love when you guys have secret stuff behind the scenes that affects me directly. Yeah, I will tell you about it on, uh, well, it'll be After Dark, technically, this week, because there's no Dion. That's true. The whole podcast is After Dark. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Even that should though just it's... be the title of the episode, episode 172, After Dark. Deal, that's the episode title, it's official. You heard it here. Ha <laughs> <laughs> he said it. Don't bet your hedge, yeah. After Dark. <laughs> I'm just going to call it After Dark right now. Oh, jeez. Boom, written down, After Dark, it's official. I got my little oh, timestamp card in front of me. Front says Bix yeah. Softfield Pen, back says 1420, After Dark. Yeah. <laughs> um, over here on the channel, you guys know what's up. We had the High Council. We got the big stream this uh, Thursday night, so I don't know exactly when this episode's going to go live, but it will be. Uh, maybe I'll just put it up Thursday morning so you guys can catch it tomorrow. But, um, yeah, nothing too crazy. Not really invested in the Game of Thrones stuff, but I do have a couple videos coming out, so that'll be uh, exciting for you. And if you've backed the comic, I've gotten more pages done since last week's High Council. I believe three more. So I'm in the final stretch of at the end of the story. It's almost complete on my end. And I told everybody on um, World Class Bullshitters Presents, Good Morning Pop Culture, because I couldn't think of the name, um, the bonus comic that everyone's getting for backing the project for reaching $50,000 has been fully colored, and I have those pages ready to go. So um, I'll show you guys later. But oh, nice. be on the lookout for that. Yeah, it's called Anthology. It's uh, It was my take at like Twilight Zone level stuff. I hope people really are receptive to that, because I could put out an anthology book quarterly on top of other stuff, because those are just like mini passion projects. And um, oh, nice. I kind of got the uh, process down. So we can make all these things happen, folks. So uh, if you're invested... Uh, just be on the lookout for more from me uh, sooner than you think. And I got a huge surprise coming that the guys on the channel know about. Uh, a few other people in the fandom menace know about, but the listeners are going to find out about uh, in the coming month. So with that out of the way, uh, let's talk about something bad first. Disney bought Hulu, the rest of it. Jeez. Yeah. I Look it. I don't like Disney. Not because I dislike family entertainment or fun or $47 ice cream sandwiches, but what I don't like is a company owning everything. It's getting to a point now where Hulu, or excuse me, where Disney has basically control of the entire entertainment landscape, and we see how they treat the things they own. Uh, Marvel gets infused with garbage. Star Wars is garbage. You get countless remakes. You get bad, soulless entertainment. Now, I'm not saying Warner Brothers is our savior, but Warner Brothers is our only hope as of now. I mean, it's sad when we live in a world where a Godzilla sequel seems more fresh and original and welcomed than Star Wars. Yeah, well, and also this week we're getting John Wick 3, so... Oh, I cannot wait, dude. Uh, that is going to be... That could be the best movie of the year so far. I loved Avengers Endgame, but holy shit, John Wick could blow it away. Yeah, I'm 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 ready for it, man. Like I, I, I it was funny because when I, I remember when I first went on the date, it's so far away, and then now it's like it's here. It's like you know, next couple of days, it's gonna it's gonna ha gonna come out. So I'm I'm excited. Well, we Can't don't wait. um, we have different expectations for John Wick than we do a Marvel movie. A Marvel yeah, movie is a big grand thing, and um, John Wick is its own franchise, and it's fun. It's small. It's contained, but it hasn't disappointed. No, it hasn't. It, it really hasn't, which is which is very, you know, I'm very hopeful and yet scared for the third one because um I'm you know, it's it's the third one, so I'm just like, oh man, I hope I hope it's I hope it's good. I just hope it's good. That's my that's my thing. Is if if it's as good as the first one, I'll be happy with it. You know, that's that's my expectation. Cause then that that'll be that'll be really that'll be the first trilogy in a while where all three the all three of the movies have been awesome. Which hasn't happened since I think Back to the Future. I'd say Indiana Jones. Yeah, Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones, yeah. Kendo, yeah, so. are you going to make time to see John Wick soon? I am. I will probably go see it Friday night, maybe. If not, it'll be very early part of next week. Yeah, now, folks, for next week's show, uh, Nick, do you plan on seeing it before next week's podcast? 
Definitely. Definitely. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I will make that commitment then myself. I'll try to go see it next Tuesday. Uh, we will be back next week with a review. I know Dion's going to be pumped to see it. So that way, all four of us can say we've seen it. And it was funny. The cousin I went to see the first one with, I hung out with him on Monday. He's like, oh, yeah, John Wick. I remember that movie. I fell asleep in it. So, <laughs> wow. Uh, what? I, I don't know. Maybe he does drugs or something. <laughs> it's my cousin you've met. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. He slept through John Wick, and I was just like... I have a picture of him passed out. It's hilarious. You know how people will unzip their pants and stick their finger out of the zipper to look like a dick? Yeah. I got a picture of Dan doing that to my cousin. Um. <laughs> Wait, right. was his hand, was Dan's hand in his own pants or your cousin's pants? I won't tell you that. Okay, because that, that, that brings it up to a whole different level. Well, I'm from Ohio, so shit's different. Yeah, right yeah not, not, not Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> This isn't Appalachia. I was watching something. They were talking about Appalachia. I was like, oh, Kendo, I know you don't live here. I'm, I'm not Appalachia. I literally just said, oh, Kendo, I know you don't live here. Thank you. <laughs> I know geography, man. It's just fun to piss you off. Yeah, yeah. App- Appalachia is near Vermont, right? That's where it is. Um, no, that's just where the hippies live. <laughs> Does it stink in that state perpetually? Probably. It, it just smells like patchouli and feet. And a little bit of bo and butt stink. Yeah, yeah. and 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 beer, <laughs> craft I, beer. I can deal with the smell of beer. I actually enjoy it. But uh, yeah, those other scents, no, thank you. Well, I knew some hippie girls that smelled like patchouli. I just... <laughs> Everybody knew some hippie girls that smelled like patchouli. Yeah, yeah, we mm-hmm. all we, we we all we all do we all do. Yeah, Dion would probably sleep with him if he could. That's yeah, probably you know. true. But he can't because he's married. So anyway, we came to talk about Hulu. Uh, Sorry, folks. So uh, here's the news that I have found. Disney gains complete control over Hulu after deal with Comcast. Comcast has agreed to give Disney complete control over Hulu immediately with the end goal of selling their entire stake in five years. When Disney was in discussions of acquiring Fox's assets, the attention of such a sale either went to the possibility that Disney would also do major properties like X-Men and Avatar, or the impact on Hollywood overall. Though the major, the loss of a major studio and thousands of jobs, one other implication is the deal of the deal, which officially completed earlier this year, was would Disney gain control over Hulu? The service launched in 2008, blah, 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 blah. And uh, it's officially announced today that uh, Disney has now full control over Hulu after a deal was struck with Comcast. And it says, uh, the arrangement will see the latter company remain a co-owner for the next five years before they sell their stake to Disney at a value that's guaranteed to be at least $9 billion. Even if the service's value becomes smaller over time. But Comcast will have no input on what Disney decides to do with Hulu moving forward. I mean, I really really like Hulu. I really do like Hulu. I use it probably most out of the, the top three VOD apps I have. Same. And you know that's that's a little that's very upsetting. It's just like if it if it goes to shit, I'm gonna be really pissed off because I'm gonna go have to I'm gonna go have to go back to um, downloading shit illegally and watching it that way. You know, I've thought about that. I mean, not doing it myself, but I've thought about the implications of Hulu being more of a Disney thing, and I wonder how many people will start pirating. Wasn't there an article out? Maybe it was you that brought it to my attention that says that the streaming service numbers are on the rise. More people are pirating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a video that somebody made as well, and it's been a couple articles on Torn Freak as well, where they're seeing because it used to be because you, you know there's a place you can go and look at internet traffic and what what's the most now, and you, you I think for a while now, uh, Pirate Bay and things like that were like you know down to like number ten or you know below ten, and you know they weren't doing it. But now with the rise of every every TV network coming up with their own VOD app that you have to pay for, people are tired of it. They're not going to pay for it. That's the thing. Like they they just don't want to give the money out, so they're starting to pirate more and more. And so those you can see the slow rise of Pirate Bay and things like that coming back up again. So yeah, it's um you know it's just what what the consumer wants. They they're willing to pay for things to a certain extent, <clears throat> but when you start gouging them, then they get pissed off and start pirating your shit. So you wouldn't download a car. Why would you download a show? Oh God, I'd download <laughs> I, a car. I would too. <laughs> There are 3D printers for a reason, okay? Is that the future? I can 3D print myself an Aston Martin DB5? Yeah, um, the, the only problem is it's some assembly required. <laughs> I mean, I can read a book on how to assemble the car. There you go. It, could, would be like a giant, it would be like a giant Lego kit. 
Ooh, that yeah. sounds fun. <laughs> you'd have to, you'd essentially have to three D print yourself not just the car but like every part to the car as well. I would want to three D print myself the metal frame and then just put it on top of like a a nice car like a I don't know. I mean, you, a Tesla. You do that too. Yeah, there so you go. yeah, you could do that too. Because I'm. I know I'm not a purist, and this will offend like the one car guy that listens to our show. But I would rather have the exterior look dead on the movie, and then the interior be accommodating and new. I don't care if it's accurate at all. I mean, that that wouldn't be bad if you had the exterior be, you know, the uh, the DB5 and the interior be a, be like a Tesla, because that'd be futuristic as fuck, and it would work out. So, did you hear the next James Bond movie has an electric Aston Martin? <laughs> Jesus. Oh, I mean, as long as it looks good and it runs and it does everything, all the cool shit, I'm fine with that. I don't give a shit. You know, that's perfectly fine with me. That doesn't affect my, you know, that's not going to do affect the way I look at the movie. It's like, what? They gave him an electric car? How dare they? It's like, that's fine. You know, I mean, the cars are, the cars are, are part of the part of the lore and for it to go electric just makes sense. So I'm OK. Well, we'll see. I mean, that Bond movie, have you heard about all the shit that's going on with it? Um, I just heard it got canceled because Daniel Craig, like broke his ankle or something yeah it's like delayed for a little bit yeah 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 yeah. so that's you know people are people are already saying it's cursed i'm like no it's not this this happened (laughs) this happened with um harrison ford on you know with star wars yeah temple of doom and happy yeah it's happened before so i mean these things happen it's unfortunate it sucks yeah but i mean what do you do the job yeah yeah sometimes you get hurt making movies yeah when you when you do your yeah, when you do your own stunts, I mean, these things happen. That's why Brie Larson's safe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, fuck you, woman. Uh, I Look, it, I'm not really sold on Bond 25. The more I hear about it, the information I get from this Phoebe Waller bridge lady, a.k.a. L337, who's writing to make the women <clears throat> stronger, and all the shit that's going on behind the scenes, I think a lot of people want this movie to fail. I just want this movie to be over, and I want Daniel Craig out of the role of James Bond. Yeah, um, he's yeah he's been there too long. I don't. I'm not a fan. Of, I'm not a fan of his his you know his movies at all. I mean the Bond the Bond movies at all. I just yeah just can't do it. Kendo, what about you? Have you heard any of this news? I know you're a huge Daniel Craig fan, especially his sports uh, opinions. Uh no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, Thank you for your fuck input. him. Yeah, well, you know what? His team came in second, so I'm good right now. Uh, if we can only lose in a couple weeks, I'll be even happier. Okay. Well, there you go. By uh, the way, his movies suck. His Bond <laughs> movies? Or all movies? Uh, that, well, his Bond movie. I don't think I've watched a Daniel Craig movie that's not a Bond movie. Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels? Isn't he in that? No. In, no. He's he in don't, you know, he's in the... Um, Layer Cake. Layer Cake. Logan Lucky. Nope. Girl nope. Dragon Tattoo. Nope. Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah, I actually liked that movie quite a bit. Yeah, it was really good. But you know, his, his, his Bond movies don't completely suck. Casino Royale is okay, and Skyfall's all right as well. Yeah, I like most of Spectre. Yeah, I was say Spectre wasn't bad. The part where he's in the torture chair is pretty cool. No, but to, to come full circle with what I'm trying to get at with uh, Hulu is we're watching all these other things die. And it's funny how... If you read the uh, article, it says they're guaranteed to get $9 billion no matter what the streaming service is valued at. So, again, Disney has just lost half a billion dollars with Vice. Have you guys heard about that? Yeah, yeah. I heard yeah. that uh, recently. Yeah, that was um, just last week's news. Yeah, so, um, that, and that's that, that's a lot of money. Well, it's probably not a lot of money to them, but, you know, it's a good chunk of change. Especially since they were going to lose a billion dollars anyways with their with their VOD service, with their own. So it seems like Disney Plus is just going to. I think I think Hulu is going to turn into Disney Plus. That's what I've always. Have I not always said that? You've always said that. Yeah, you have always said that. So it's gonna. It's actually gonna happen, and it's kind of terrifying because. Um, yeah, I might not have Hulu anymore, so that's gonna be weird. Yeah, I. Uh, I'm gonna keep Hulu. I've said this too publicly. If Disney Plus is Hulu. I will have it because it's already a streaming service I pay for. But I'm not going to go out of my way to support Disney Plus just on principle of what they do. But, I mean, how many times can you sell me a Pixar movie or movies you don't want to? I don't want to watch? I already own the Marvel movies, so what is there for me? I own Star Wars. You can't hide that shit behind a paywall anymore. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, and it's... 
I mean, I've, I've heard this from, what is it, CBS All Access. Uh, I, I have a friend who, who, who has it. And apparently you couldn't even get, um, you can't get all the episodes for Big Bang Theory. Like, they're not all on there. That's you, the least. Yeah, you, you, can't even get the, you can't even get current shows on there, I think, as well. So it seems like they're making their own content only for that, and you cannot have access to their current content, which is really dumb. Which doesn't make any sense, so... It's kind of stupid. Well, I'm yeah. reading more about this, too, and it says, the uh, Disney Plus, the focus of the service will be on Disney Studios' family-friendly content with the full animated library. Now, does that mean full animated film library or full actual animated library, including uh, cartoon shorts, TV show episodes, all that shit? I mean, if you're really trying to sell people, you got to put, like, the Disney Saturday or weekday afternoon sk- uh, schedule with, like, Darkwing Duck, Tailspin, all that crap, DuckTales. You can't just say, oh, guys, you can watch The Hunchback of Notre Dame and this and that and that. Oh, have, you, have you watched the new DuckTales? Uh, no. How bad is it? It's not It's not great. I mean, I, I watched a couple episodes and I was like, like this, is not, this is not it. But then again, you know, it's like from the beginning when you, you're you really like hearing the story and stuff like that. So it's a little strange for me. I just know it as random episodes when I used to watch as a kid. So, but I don't know. I'm not. It's it's OK. It's not that good. The video game kicks ass. Oh, the video game's so much fun. Yeah, I might. Yeah, since since this whole Disney Plus thing is actually happening, I might have to go and buy box sets of of Tailspin and Chip and Dale and Darkwing Duck and all this other shit and just have it. Darkwing Duck, that's to. my show right there. Yeah, dude, that was so much fun. Oh my gosh. Well, let me rephrase that. I remember loving that show. I don't know if I still do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things you got to watch. You know, twenty years later to see how well it holds up. Like I did with that Scooby Doo movie the other night. Who Brothers? Uh, Reluctant Reluctant Werewolf. Yeah, the reluctant werewolf. And yeah, uh, tw- it's been at least twenty something years because twenty years ago I was sixteen. I guarantee it had been longer than that. So it's probably been about twenty twenty five years since I last watched it. And I was like, yeah, this is still good. I still like this because I used to watch it all the time as a kid. I had that on tape yeah. as well. Yeah, oh yeah, I remember the tape. Yeah, was that one yeah, of the uh, was that one of the movies yeah. where Shaggy had the red T shirt? Uh, I think so. Okay, I know they changed his clothes for a while. And I was like, this looks weird. I know it's just him, uh, uh, him, Scooby, and Scrappy. Like the rest of the the group isn't there. Didn't need him. No. Yeah, because he yeah he 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 got cursed and he had to he had to race in the in the monster whatever it was. Yeah, the monster race and everybody had a gimmick car. It was great. It was a fun <laughs> fun time and you know he got brunch and crunch fucking everything up. Oh yeah, it was like um, what was it? Uh, it's it's like death race or something. Yeah. Brunch and Crunch, by the way, where you could tell were a complete ripoff of Gomez and Fester Adams. <laughs> Have you ever seen the uh, Hanna Barbera Adams Family cartoon? Yeah, man, I remember watching it. Um, yeah, it's I remember a, watching it Saturday morning. It's been yeah, a while. It, was, it, it was actually really good. Yeah, I, I think I think Adam's Family. I think the guy who, who who did the Adams Family show was actually the voice of Gomez uh, for the cartoon. Oh, John Aston. Yeah. So. They credit, or not him, uh, credit him, but his son is Sean Astin, the kid from the Goonies, right? Correct. Uh, or, yeah. or so you thought. Well, it's oh. his stepson, but he's yeah. raised him his whole life. Yeah, because he, you know, he thought it was his son type of thing. It was, the mom was loose, we'll put it like that. Yeah, well, <laughs> from what I understand, Sean Astin considers John Astin his dad, regardless of whether or not it's biological. Yeah. <laughs> So in the Adams Family cartoon that you're talking about, Jackie Coogan and Ted Cassidy, who play Uncle Fester and Lurch, respectively, do the yeah. voiceovers. Mm. Oh, nice. Yeah, let's see. It had only 16 episodes. Wow. Yeah. Well, the original, the Adams Family TV shows only got like 30 episodes or something like that. They were only on for like a couple of years. Jodie Foster was on the sh- cartoon. Oh, jeez. Yeah. It's so weird. Let's see. How many episodes? Okay, the Adams Family 1964 TV series. Now, speaking of stuff we watched as a kid, I used to watch this. Uh, I had a, two or three videotapes that had like four or five episodes each. Yeah, yeah, I had those too. Yeah, there were 64 episodes of the Adams Family between 64 and 66. It is often compared with the CBS rival The Munsters, which ran for the same two seasons and achieved somewhat higher Nielsen ratings. <laughs> yeah, Munsters was good too. I like The Munsters and The Adams Family. The, the, that was. One of the best parts about some of that Nick at Night Monday Night are the block party shit they had oh, going yes, on. Oh, dude. Because one year they had the Munsters on, and then the next year the Munsters weren't on, but they had the Adams Family on. And during the course of the summer, you get to watch the whole whole run of the episodes good twice. 
Oh, yeah, I remember that stuff. Gun to your head, you got to pick one. Oh, shit. I'm going to take the Munsters. Nick? Yeah, I'm going to go Munsters as well. Yeah, they were, they're, it's just, uh, I don't know, it just seems like a better show. (laughs) Uh, I think I watched more Munsters, because I distinctly remember that summer block party would have been 1995. Yeah, because it was mid, it was early mid nineties. I remember coming back from. I know this is an odd memory to have, but I remember coming back from the grocery store with my grandma, and it was starting at eight o'clock, and we got home just as it started. I'm like, I gotta watch it, because back when I was a little kid, they let me stay up all 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 night in the summer, and I remember watching the show. I was thinking, this is the coolest show ever. <laughs> now, now I think both of those are on Hulu. Oh wow! Okay, well I might I might have to go back and watch them then. I know the Adams Family for sure is on Hulu because it's funny. It's in my list, and every time I finish watching the Goldbergs, it starts playing the Adams Family. I'm like, I don't want to watch the fucking Adams Family. But yeah, the Monsters, I guess, is a better show. Yeah, I mean, it's it's more iconic. There's um, there's still I think yeah, it's just it's just more fun, man. What has a better? Theme and it's got on? Fred Gwynn. Yeah, that's true. It does have Fred Gwynn, and he wasn't a treasure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pet Cemetery. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, he was in Pet Cemetery as well. He and my cousin Vinny. Yep, he was the judge. Oh uh, yeah, he was. Yep, it was his. It was his last film role. Oh wow, I didn't realize that. Jeez. Wait, there's another show called The Monsters Today. What the hell? Um, it may, it may have, it may have been a, like a reboot they did recently or something that just didn't uh, pan out. Oh my god! Wait till you see how fucking terrible it looks. This is embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be anything close to the original. There's no way. Uh, Lee Merriweather? Oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna the show you. Uh, so, Catwoman? Yeah, she played Lily Munster. Huh. Jonathan Brandis was in it. Isn't he dead? He is dead. That's kind of sad. Jeez. Here you go. Here's an image of the Munsters today. I just want to wait for your reaction. Let's see here. What the fuck? What the hell? <laughs> that's it. That's real. Oh man, that's horrible. Herman God. Munster looks like is a... this. This okay. This is this is exactly the difference between like Hellboy and the new one. <laughs> Fred, this, is, Fred, this is the difference. This is exactly Fred the Munster difference. Looks like he's got an extra chromosome. <laughs> <laughs> he does. I think he and looks what? like a guy oh, who's God. drowned and absorbed the water around him. Yeah, and the kid looks really weird. Like he wants to be a goth kid real bad. That's what he looks like. <laughs> this is embarrassing. This is a reboot gone wrong. Yeah. Oh gosh, it's so weird. <laughs> this is this is why they were. This is exactly why they were in black and white, and they didn't get like. I think they did a movie that was in color, and that was it. Or maybe they did a couple of them. Well, for those out there wondering what we're talking about, it's the Munsters today, which was I guess from the '90s. Herman Munster's blue. Grandpa's blue. Eddie Munster's a weird shade of yellow. Lily looks okay, and then there's some '90s chick in a jean jacket playing Marilyn. It's a dumpster fire. Oh, yeah. <sighs> anyway, moving forward from the monsters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so depressing. Um, it'll be interesting to see what Disney tries to buy next. And by interesting, I mean horrible. So uh, be prepared, right. folks. It's going to be... <sighs> That's all I can say. Yeah. I mean... <sighs> I mean, they're going to start losing money soon, and they're going to realize that, you know, whatever they've bought is not going to work, and it's just, I don't know, I'm just, they own, they've owned, they owned so much in the past 10 years, or even, you know, so yeah, in the past 10 years, they've bought up so much stuff that it's ridiculous, like, how are they allowed to, how, how are they allowed to own this much, without the, I, without the government, like, intervening and being like, hey, break your shit up, you know, like, it's, it's crazy. Here's a, here's an ideal scenario for me. So Disney buys up the streaming service. It's okay in the beginning. Then after so many streaming services, people start getting away from streaming services, move back to cable. Disney's left holding its dick. Then (laughs) the government comes in and breaks up Disney. So they have to sell off certain portions, including Marvel Studios, this, that, and the other. So they're left with with Star Wars and a couple other franchises, and uh, Disney gets knocked down a few pegs. And Bob Iger, well, he just can't handle the disappointment. He jumps out a window. You fill in the rest. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> oh man, that's yeah, and and especially especially going against Comcast. I thought they were an evil corporation, but it's you know, <laughs> no, Comcast is even worse than Disney because they'll sell out to Disney. 
Yeah, they're oh man, they're horrible. And um, and yeah, it it seems like every I, I even have an article that I pulled up now that apparently uh, Netflix is losing some of its most popular shows thanks to AT and T. Really, what does AT and T own? Is that part of Warner Brothers? Um, I don't know. I'm gonna read a little bit of the, of the article at a tech and media conference on Tuesday. AT and T CEO Randall Stepson said the company will yank Warner Media content from other streaming services so that the assets will be exclusive to the streaming service his company is launching soon. That would mean that Netflix will lose popular shows like Friends and Hulu is going to lose audience favorites like ER. AT&T will bring a lot of these media rights, licensing rights, back to otherwise put them on their own subscription video on-demand product. Uh, Stevenson said, according to the Dallas Morning News. So, yeah. Hmm. Um, so, well, I mean, to me, Netflix is already shit. Like, I barely use it. I'm literally only keeping it so I can watch you know, Stranger Things in July. And then I'll probably, like, cut it off for a few months. <laughs> yeah, I share it with Dan, so I just keep it because of our agreement. But yeah. It, it is... What do I even watch on Netflix? <sighs> I don't watch too, too much. I, I want, you know, I found that I've been watching a lot of the WWE network as of late. Cause I'm trying to watch old wrestling to remember. There's a reason why I watch this shit. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I remember when, when their, their VOD thing was real big and then it kind of like, you know, went out and people were just sharing it amongst themselves. Dude, they're doing really bad. We'll talk about it more off air. Cause our listeners don't like it, but dude, wrestling lowest ratings ever. Oh, yeah, man. It's well, yeah, and Dumpster and you know, fire doesn't even begin to describe it. Jeez, man, that's that that's crazy. And yeah, with Netflix kind of going the shitter because they're the ones who started the whole thing, and the fact that um, they're dying because I guess, and I think I think it's also because they don't put out their stats or anything, so nobody knows what to say, and it's just Netflix being like, hey, this show works, and we'll just keep funding this, or this one doesn't work, so we'll cut it off, and it's like, I think you guys are picking and choosing stuff the wrong way, and that's why you know you kind of fucked up. And I, I understand getting your own content. Like Hulu has its own content as well, but they're never they're never like constantly ramming it down your throat like Netflix is. Well, you know, when when other companies have competition, they have to up their game. But with streaming yeah. services, they just buy other shit, and you you get hurt as the consumer because it's yeah. all about exclusivity with this shit. It's not like you know we. With wrestling, you know, when the WCW and WWF existed, it's like, what is the best wrestling? So you want to watch wrestling, but you want the best of the two. You only have so much time. With Netflix and Hulu, the way licensing works and everything switches and alternates, you're kind of stuck. Basically, it's just like, well, I can watch Night at the Roxbury this month here, and then on this month there, and it, it just is a big juggling act, and it gets confusing, and it only hurts us, the consumer. Yeah, I mean, this is why I'm a fan of, of um, physical media. You know, because if I have it, I can watch whatever the fuck I want to. I don't have to get these services. I don't have to listen to this bullshit. I pop in a DVD or a Blu-ray or a hard drive, and I watch what I want and don't have to deal with anything. So. And if these companies it's, it's wanted to be cool, not cool, but if, if okay, if they wanted to entice me even further, why don't they put shit that doesn't exist on DVD out? Like, pay the money to license it, and like, well, like, okay, for example, a couple years ago, Spider-Man, the animated series that was on when we were kids, was only on Netflix, and it was on there for years, and I used to watch it all the time, because officially, the whole series doesn't exist on DVD in America. So that was a cool incentive, or, you know, you can get X-Men, which is on DVD, but you can get these shows that aren't available on other mediums, that, that'll entice you. A lot of this shit, like, Everything they build up for Disney Plus is like, well, you can get all the Marvel movies. You can get all the Marvel movies on, like, DVD or Blu-ray real cheap. We can get all the Star yeah. Wars movies. Star Wars, have been out, or Star Wars has been out on home video since 1982 or 1. So I'm just like, what the fuck are you selling me? And we know yeah. they don't have the rights to the original Star Wars movies, because TBS has them, unless they bought those, remember? That was the story. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, they, I think TBS doesn't until 2024, so... So you're selling me a, a fucking streaming service on The Last Jedi. Yeah, basically. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And, and, and whatever other crap they come up with. And, and Avatar, like, 18 or whatever the fuck they decided to do, so... How dumb is that Avatar. announcement? Dude, I, I, I laughed at it because, because I remember thinking on, on that night we said, like... Yeah, like nobody Avatar, for being as much, as much money as it made, it didn't have a pop culture impact, because... Um, you know, I the way I kind of gauge things in pop culture is that you know I go to Dragon Con and look at costumes and I can kind of feel out what people, 
you know, what's popular that year by looking at what people have put their time and money into to dress up as. And I don't remember I don't remember seeing that many um um Navi. No, yeah, Navi or Navi uh costumes at all. Like I think there were a handful, but you know, it was people in blue blue body paint. That's really all it was. Like they were they were just really elaborate smurfs. So um <laughs> It wasn't it, like you know, and, and I've never seen it again. I've never seen it again. I saw it once, and that was it. Usually, if something is part of pop culture, you'll, you'll see it like multiple years in a row. You know, somebody will dress as that thing. So, I mean, people still dress as Luke Skywalker from The Empire Strikes Back. Just saying. shit, did people people still dress up as in Sequest DSV costumes? Okay, was that the show with Roy Scheider? Yeah, that's one. Yes. It's like they're, they're, it's like they're, it's a whole underwater thing. Like that's what it is, and there's still costumes of that, which is crazy. There's still Babylon. Babylon 5 costumes, you know? So, like, there are things that um, span the test of time that um, th- that people still believe in. So, yeah. I used to love those afternoon adventure shows that you would catch on, like, uh, you know, syndication. Yeah. I'm trying to think, what else was there? Sequest DSV. Yeah. Didn't they have a toy line for this, too? They had, dude, they had toys, they had models, they had all kinds of shit. That was, yeah. was crazy. Was that Jonathan Brandis on the show? Yeah, he was. Jesus Christ! Why does he keep coming that's up the today? Second mention. Yeah, <laughs> say that's the second time he's been mentioned today. The third time. The third time he gets mentioned, he's just going to come back to life. It's just going to happen. His name is Lucas Wollencheck. <laughs> His action figure is him in a skin tight bodysuit with a jean jacket over the top and Crocs. Yeah, that sounds about right. Made by Playmates, oh, like the him. same people who did uh, Ninja Turtles and the Star Trek cartoon or the Star Trek toys from the nineties. Yeah. God, these look terrible. I should get some. <laughs> I'm sure they're dirt cheap because barely anybody re- remembers Sequest DSV. I'm glad I remember it, just so I can buy some <laughs> useless toys and open them up. Let's there see how go. much Roy Scheider goes for on Amazon. You want to take a guess? Um, uh, ten dollars. Ooh, five dollars. Five dollars. Fourteen seventy four for a God. Sequest DSV Captain Nathan Hale uh, Bridger action figure. Jeez. Oh my God! They have. Oh, the ships look kind of cool. Well, here's the thing. To make the costumes real easy, the most difficult part is getting the patches. You can get those on, like, Etsy for, like, ten bucks. You just need a jumpsuit, and, like, that's it. If you want to buy them used, you can get them for $3.74 on eBay. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, I, I... Folks, please do not actually send us Sequest DSV toys to the P.O. Box, 5069 Cincinnati, Ohio, 45205. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Whatever you do, don't sell. Don't send us the entire series box set on DVD either. <laughs> well, I would be like, "Hey, we got Sequest. Uh, is this the episode with the regulator Leslie Perina?" <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! god. It, it I think I think that show had like three seasons, and that's it. I think I'm pretty sure it did. Yeah, it's. Oh man. Yeah, it was. It was a show. It was a thing. God, uh, here's an afternoon. We get up. We have a couple drinks, eat. Yeah, we drink first before we eat. Then we watch an episode of Sequest, a couple episodes of Hercules' Legendary Journeys. That takes us to late afternoon, and then we just uh, you know, party into the evening. How's that sound for a day? That sounds well, like a that sounds like a slice of fried gold to me. What All we right, sh- then let's do it. Nick, bring your uh, little DVD player to Horror Hound. We'll just watch Sequest DSV at the table. <laughs> <laughs> now, if that's on Disney Plus, sign me up, man. Jonathan Brand. That'd be weird. That'd be so weird. Yeah, and like here's it like. And another another channel is it Nickelodeon Splat. I wish I wish they would get more shit. Like they keep this one keeps disappearing. I think it's on Verve or VRV, whatever the hell you call it. Um, they they need to up their game. Like I would, I wish they had more stuff on there so I could watch because like they just have Rocco's Modern Life, Keenan and Kale, and some new stuff that I don't care about. Yeah, it's disappointing because you know? I have that yeah. app because of you. Yeah, and I mean, I I watch a lot of Boomerang and then, like, Rooster Teeth and a couple other things as well uh, I watch on there. But, yeah, I mean, Nickelodeon Spot would have been, like, you're missing a big opportunity there, man. So big. Like, if, okay, if if you had Salute Your Shorts on there. Oh, my and, God, yes. And, and, and Pete and Pete, mm. I'm there. I'm fucking there, Stop man. Stop speaking my language to me. I'm getting excited. <laughs> Fuck, I'm excited. I love those shows. I think about Pete you have and Pete those every shows? week. Dude, yeah, you have those shows on there permanently. Oh, dude, you're you're, you're killing me, man! Like, there, you, people would people would flock to that service dude, immediately. Three, Pete didn't even get released on DVD. 
I know. And like, if, if they had that shit on there, that yeah, and just to watch it whenever you wanted to, man, that'd be great. You kidding me? Come on. Uh, what was it? Hey, dude. Oh, yeah. I remember that, too. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I bought that. I bought that on DVD. <laughs> Wasn't somebody real famous on that show before they got famous? Um, like some woman. Yeah, it was. Um, shit. Who was she? She was in Dodgeball. Oh, are you um, talking about uh, Ben Stiller's wife? Yeah, Christina or Christine Taylor. Yeah, there she is. Yep. Yep. She was. Yep. She was on there. I remember. I remember distinctly her being there. That guy looks familiar too. Who is that guy? Like David Lasher. Never heard of him. Anyway, yeah, Christine nope. Taylor. She was famous. She's no longer yeah. with. I was wondering if Jonathan Brandis was on this show too. <laughs> not. I'm about to say it's like. <laughs> Let's see what Jonathan Brandis was in, just in case we want to talk about him anymore. Because he was uh, in Ladybugs here. with. Uh, oh God, Rodney Dangerfield. Yeah, well, he was also in Sidekicks. Yeah, yeah, he was with Chuck Norris. Damn, he's been dead yep. for 16 years almost. Holy crap! Yeah. He was. Say, in... It's been a while. Oh, he was in it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's the original stuttering Bill. Fuck, he's never ending story two. Oh god, sidekicks, I remember that movie. Uh Stepfather Two, Ride with the Devil. Uh Outside Ride Providence. With the Devil actually isn't a bad movie. Hearts War, Bad Girls from the Valley High, Fall into Darkness, Two Came Back, Oliver and Company. He, he's in Ghost Dad. Oh my god, he's in the Munsters today again. Jesus, it's all full circle. <laughs> <laughs> And Fatal Attraction. All right. Well, some, shit. He was in some well-known stuff. He was on the Aladdin wonder, cartoon. I wonder what happened. <laughs> Shut up. No, I mean, I'm serious. I know what happened, but I wonder why. Wasn't he gay? And that's, you know. Shit, I don't know. I just know he killed himself. And it was because I remember hearing the news. John the Brandis is dead today from suicide. I'm like, that dude's been in a lot of shit. Why'd he kill himself? Yeah. This movie Sidekicks looks kind of shitty, but I want to watch it now. Oh, dude, it's, uh, well, basically, oh, it's... basically, Chuck Norris is, is, is his imaginary friend. That's that's how it works. Yeah. All right, we need and to then, see this, Nick. Yeah, it's, I, I used to watch it a lot as a kid. Um, and then eventually he does meet Chuck Norris, like, in real life at, at the end at the end when he's at, like, a, a karate competition or something. Like, it's, it's so weird. It's a very strange movie. It's got a great but... uh, poster, though. Oh, yeah, it does. But listen, it's got Bo Bridges, Mako... Jonathan Brandis, Dana McKellar, or Dana McKellar, Danica McKellar, if I could speak, Richard Mull, Joe Piscopo, and Chuck Norris with music by Alan Silvestri. <laughs> Yet, it was a flop. And for those yeah. out there who don't know, Alan Silvestri has done scores for little movies like Back to the Future and the Avengers Saga. So uh, mm-hmm. you may have heard his music. Just just throwing that out there. <laughs> I think Danny Elfman actually did the second Avengers. I'm not going to look into it, but uh, I'm going to just claim it is. Oh, he yeah, also we'll, we'll, we'll roll with that. He also did Predator, The Mummy Returns, The Abyss, The Quick and the Dead, Lilo and Stitch, Night at the Museum, <clears throat> Ready Player One. Speaking speaking of the speaking of the Mummy, I didn't realize it, but all the Mummy movies are all the Brendan Fraser Mummy movies are on Netflix, and I watched the first one a couple nights ago, and I was like, man, it still holds up. It's still a lot of fun. I love that movie. The 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 effects are a little eh, but I mean, it's I can deal. Like it's fine. <laughs> it's still really fun. Yeah, I, I have a great time watching that movie. I saw that in theaters. Is it, I've been, what, 98, right? Uh, yeah. Or is it 99? I think so. Maybe it's 99. I don't want to make a mistake. People are like, yeah, did you missed that up. I'm like, well, because I fucking lived through it and I don't really remember it. So, The Mummy. Not the 2016 one, because that one was terrible. Yeah, 1999. Yeah, the, the, 99, yeah. I saw The Mummy Returns in theaters, and then I've never seen The Mummy, The Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. Yeah, I don't think anybody did. Yeah, I, was just, I didn't even know it existed. Uh, was it a flop? Let's see. Ooh, Probably. it's got... Can we... Oh, uh, no, it is far from a flop. Wow. <laughs> okay, so it had a budget of $145 million. Can we guess the box office? Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, $250. 300 $401 million. Jesus. <laughs> now, um, can we guess the Rotten Tomato score? 55 <laughs> 50, 43. 13. Jeez. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so it wasn't a flop. I think it actually made more money than the Tom Cruise one. Let me look. Oh, God, dude, that one, like, I, I watched that one just, just because it's shit. Actually, the Tom Cruise one made $9 million more million, but that was in 2017 dollars. So 
if you know we figure it out for inflation, this one was still the mo- more successful. Oh yeah, definitely. But yeah, I've, yeah, I, I watched that one in theaters, and thank God I didn't pay for it. Uh, but man, it was fucking bad. <laughs> yeah. Once The Rock <laughs> left, I lost interest. It's like the uh, what is it? The Scorpion King sequel with Dave Bautista instead of uh, <laughs> The Rock. Well, I think there's also a third one done without him and uh, without even Batista, so... Oh, my God, it's got... Straight to DVD one. It's got Billy Zane and Ron Perlman. Oh, God. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Billy Zane always getting that short end of the stick, man, I swear. He's got a great hairpiece in it, though. <laughs> I love Billy Zane. Oh, God. <laughs> the fact that... So, apparently the Monsters today had more episodes than the original Monsters. What? Yeah, they doesn't they ran it, for three seasons and it has seventy three episodes. Doesn't make it better. No, I'm not saying it's better. I'm just intrigued right now by the monsters today. Kendo, let the monsters go. They're never coming back. Not I'm tonight. For them. Never not any back, night. But... Damn man, it's so awkward. Ugh, I'm just looking at that blue skinned picture. Anyway. Uh, Nick, did you have anything you wanted to talk about tonight? Yes, um, Jeff Bezos reveals lunar lander design for sustained human presence on the moon. Ooh. So Jeff Bezos, uh, the owner of the owner of Amazon, uh, is also, you know, battling with SpaceX and Elon Musk for, um, I guess, universal supremacy. I, I don't know. They're both firing rockets into space and launching satellites and doing all kinds of weird shit. So. Uh, Jeff Bezos of Blue Origin announced the first lunar lander, Blue Moon, at a press conference today. <laughs> I'll take a Blue Moon, please. <laughs> oh, man. you gotta, you got to work on these names, people. Fuck. The, lander's, the lander has been years in development, according to the company's new project website, and can reportedly land multiple metric tons of payload onto the moon's surface. Its capability to provide precise and soft landing will enable a sustained human presence on the moon, the Blue Origin website claims. Um, so yeah, apparently um, Elon Musk is going for Mars and Bezos is going for the moon. So um, if we can just get all these billionaires to you know own one planet, we should be fine, right? Hey, billionaires, if you'd like to give us a $1 million charitable donation to this channel, we'd appreciate it. And then uh, go do what you want to do in space. Just putting that out there. Yeah, we'll put it to good use. Yeah, we'll. you know what? You guys take space. We'll take Earth. We'll take over all of entertainment. We'll buy out Disney. And um, what, what will we do? I don't know. We'll figure. Actually, I know what we'll do. We'll dissolve all the assets. We'll invest them. And then we'll live off the interest forever. No, we'll just, we'll, yeah. we'll just, we'll just buy all the, all the studios and then make one giant streaming service for like, I don't know, 70 bucks a month. Everything to every device you ever own. <laughs> Dude, That's it. We can become, become trillionaires overnight. I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you do. Take all the content ever and just put it in one streaming service. Charge a crazy, charge a, a, a good amount of money per month, and that's it. What we could actually do as well is we could buy up the internet in the country and then bundle it all together and charge slightly more. But you get everything because it'd be consumer friendly. So it'd be like, let's say for a hundred bucks, you get like gigabit speed internet and streaming services. That's all you need. Yeah, every every movie, every TV show ever made ever, um, plus internet. And then we also install free Wi-Fi across the country, even in the shittiest parts of the country. Aren't yeah, we good I'm humanitarians? Like <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, we should be doing stuff for other parts of the planet. They'll they'll get their unlimited cable internet packages soon enough. But you know, we'll start with America. Why not? Worldwide. Actually, I, what is it? Actually, I've I've seen this one. I watched this one uh, guy who apparently is selling. What was it? He was selling wireless internet to his town because um, he couldn't get. She kept getting shit service, so he got a he got a big fat like fi- a fiber optic line to his house. Put up some, um, what was it, wireless uh, signal emitters on top of his roof, and then went to everybody's house and saying, "Hey, are you tired of shitty internet? Uh, give me X dollars a month, and you'll and here's the password, and you'll get internet, you know, throughout your house forever, as long as you pay the price." Nice. Yeah, I like that plan. Yeah, I saw some kid in England do it as well, and I was just like, "Man, that's fucking crazy!" Like, there's a lot of money in it. <laughs> it's like collecting rainwater here, illegal. Oh, is it really? What the I have no clue. I'm, I have no, I'm just I'm just guessing. <laughs> I have heard of that. I'm just like, why is that illegal? I do not understand why that's a, that's illegal. That makes no sense to me. The dumbest laws on the book. 
Uh, you, dude, you're not you're not kidding. Hey, you want to hear? I think. Oh, good. I, th- I think in Florida, like you can, like you, there are people in Florida selling solar panels that couldn't uh, hook them up because it's illegal. I love so that when state. when with, so, so when there are like hurricanes down there, there's, there's no power. You're fucked. Yeah, nice. just another reason why I'll never live in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> so would you like some good news? Yeah, of course. Uh, it's official. Rick and Morty's coming back in November this year. Oh my god, that makes me so happy. I I rewatched the the three seasons recently, so I'm just like I'm ready for it. I I love that. I've loved that show ever since I first saw it a couple years ago. So, dude, I'm I enjoy ready for the it. show quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very rewatchable. It's funny as hell. Uh, there's the uh, there's the the ongoing story all the way through the seasons, which I love. So, I'm I'm down. Plus, uh, Keith David is president, so that makes me happy. Yeah. Oh, he was. As he was in should. the last episode, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where the where they ghost the president, and then he like <laughs> he makes them enemies of the state. Does he like actually fight him? Yeah, yeah, they fight. They fight on the uh, on the White House lawn. <laughs> well, they fight out throughout the whole White House, and uh, end up on the lawn. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm gonna watch that show as soon as it hits. That's another reason why I like Hulu because Rick and Morty was on there. Yep. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just don't have cable, so to me, it'd be a waste of eighty bucks a month to get it. Yeah, because and and then then they want to tack on that DVR shit for extra whatever. So then, um, and the, plus those things, you know, they always fill up too much and you're always back, it always backed up with, with stuff you want to watch anyways. And you can only record X amount of channels. So you can't record everything. So it's, it, it becomes a problem. It becomes a problem. Yeah. Problematic as one might say. Yeah. <laughs> I hate yeah. that word too, Kendo. Don't worry. Bad word. Yeah. Bad word. Yeah. Believe me. Uh, I hate it. I fucking hate it. Oh. So, uh, Kendo, what do you want to talk about? You got anything to bring up? Uh, I saw Detective Pikachu. Oh, and how was it? I found it to be a fun and enjoyable movie-going experience. It was a better story than The Last Jedi. <laughs> so give us a quick synopsis. All right, so quick synopsis is this. Uh, we meet a kid. I don't remember what the hell his name is. And uh, him and his friend, his friend's trying to get him to uh, catch a Pokemon. He doesn't want a Pokemon friend. And he f- gets a message and a phone call that his dad has, you know, been in an accident and is no longer amongst us. So he travels to Rhyme City to find out what happened to his dad. And he there he meets a Pikachu that is a detective that he can understand what he's saying, but nobody else can. And together, him and the Pikachu go on a quest to find out what happened to the dude's dad. Hmm. Now, how was the Pokemon action? Uh, it was fun. For anybody that's a fan of like the games and or maybe the, the cartoon from you know 20-something years ago and all that stuff, then uh, yeah, you'll like it because it's really cool because like... The, it's funny because like you know how sometimes you see those like establishing shots and it's like an overhead of like a house and stuff and you see birds fly by. Mm-hmm. That's one of the first shots you see, but instead of birds, it's Pidgeys. Oh, cool. so it's like all right, so it's kind of cool because it's like what it would be like if Pokemon really did exist in the world. Like the they're trying to catch one at the beginning and it's just a Cubone, but it's true to character. So the Cubone bone is just sitting there like crying in the middle of this field because that's what Cubones do, and. uh he tries to catch it. It busts out, and then proceeds to try to beat his ass with his bone club. It's 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 all fun. It's a good time. It's a lot of fun. It's the it's CGI heavy, obviously, because Pokemon are not real things. What? And uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Fucking crazy, right? And uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's I enjoyed it. it. Like you said, the story's good. The uh, the the plot twist is good. It's uh, everything about it's 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 a fun time. I I do love that Ryan Reynolds had to put out like a, a press release saying that you know this is a family movie and it's not just like him being Deadpool as Pikachu or something like he had to put out a whole thing about that. It's like it's a family friendly movie. There's no cursing. There's no blood. You know, go take your kids. It would have made oh, more yeah, money yeah. if it would have been that. Could you imagine a fucking dirty Pikachu? Dude, yeah. well, uh, I, yeah. Pokemon movie. <laughs> go fuck yourselves. <laughs> Oh god. Well, apparently that there is there is like some some roll some B roll of that, or there's some the stuff that they have that they made. I guess that would just make a horrible like Deadpool Pikachu movie. And oh. it's like I, w- I would pay money to see that to have that on. Yeah, have say, that if on it's something. Ryan Reynolds, you know that they, they, he talked him into doing something of like. Of course that. he did. Of course he did. 
You know, the rumor for a while was that Danny DeVito was going to be the voice of Pikachu. Which still would have been and hilarious. I still would have watched it was him. Shit, are you kidding me? I might have That'd actually seen it by now if, Pika- if Danny DeVito was the voice. Yeah, it was. Oh, man, that's that's funny as hell. <laughs> yeah, Danny DeVito, Pikachu. Oh, my God. I love Danny DeVito so much. Could we? You know what? You know what? If we can get a Nick Nick Nolte Pikachu, I think I think that'd be good as well. It says Reynolds was cast as the leading voice, but somewhere exists a clip of Pikachu as voiced by Danny DeVito playing as it's always sunny in Philadelphia character Frank is bound to become oh my an internet God. legend. <laughs> oh my god! Nice. Oh my god! <laughs> and the team actually tested Danny DeVito as the voice. Oh, that's funny. Huh. Yeah, I, I love me some Danny DeVito. He's in those weird commercials that are out right now, though. Oh, about, like, what is it, like, refinancing or yeah. taxes or something like that? Hitting yeah. the gym and somebody's stretching his leg. Oh, yeah. I'm just like, okay, Frank. <laughs> you ever seen the episode of It's Always Sunny where he tries to hang himself, Kendo? Yeah. I'm broke, Charlie. I lost all my money in a Ponzi scheme. What am I going to do? <laughs> Nick, he tries to hang himself, and then the fucking rope breaks. You, got, mm-hmm. and you also got to see the one dude where he uh, is hosting a little kid's beauty pageant because he comes running and he goes, we're yep. screwed! And he comes running the door and he trips and breaks his nose and like blood spurting everywhere. So the entire episode, he has to wear this like makeup. He goes to a mortician to get his face made up and he hosts oh, this yeah. little God. kid's beauty pageant <laughs> in a fucking tuxedo and he looks like a corpse. And he's got, oh, this, he's got this mic on him. And so when he's backstage, he's talking, he's like, I don't care if somebody wants to do whatever they want to do with my body. Bang me, throw me in the garbage, I don't care, I'm a corpse. And, like, the whole audience hears it over the PA system, and he has to sing a song about not diddling kids. It's hilarious. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> Dude, you, you gotta get invested in that show, seriously. It is I, worth your I time. I do. I, I'll, I'll, I, will, I will very soon. I'll, I need to, because I'm, I'm starting to run out of things to watch, and things are ending, so... Start with season... I mean, look at Season one's gonna be just six episodes of whatever, but season two is when Dan DeVito gets involved, and that's when it gets good. And then season three, four... Up until season twelve, it's really awesome. So, yeah, you have a lot of fun. God, I want to watch that show now. <laughs> Our buddy Salvador sent me a Frank Reynolds bobblehead. I use it every single day. Oh God! <laughs> I'm gonna press the button right now. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Frank Reynolds. So, uh, on a scale of one to ten, what would you rank Detective Pikachu, Kendo? I I'd, I'd give it a. Uh... I'd say it's a uh, seven point seven five. Okay, pretty high praise. Yeah, I mean, if you're like I said, if you if you if you have kids, they'll and they're into Pokemon, they'll like it. Even if they're not, they'll probably still like it. Uh, if you've ever been into Pokemon in any way, which I have and still am, I love playing the games, and you'll you'll like it too. It's a lot of fun, and uh, Ryan, Ryan Reynolds does a great job as a Pikachu. Isn't it nice to talk about a Ryan that's not Ryan Johnson? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. We'll talk about Ryan Reynolds all day. The guy does good work. Say what you will. Call him an asshole. Say he's an egotistical prick. He even very well could be. But the stuff that he puts out usually turns out to be pretty entertaining. Yeah. Plus, plus he has his own gin. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, he sold me on uh, Deadpool single-handedly. Oh, yeah, totally. Oh, Just the, the fucking vignettes. The... the... <laughs> The extreme self awareness of it, and oh, uh, man. You know, all the trailer stuff. I mean, we saw that trailer for Deadpool too. That little teaser where he was pretending to be Bob Ross. Oh, that was oh hilarious. my god! Well, the, that oh, was yeah, like the, it, that. Geez. That right there sold the entire movie. Yeah, and I, I love that all of those all those things are on the Blu-ray. Like, oh man, makes me so happy. The thing is, I have that Blu-ray. I have yet to open it up. <laughs> I got it on Black Friday. Sit, look it on my shelf. I have a little portion of shit that I didn't open. That includes Kingsman: The Golden Circle, or no wait, yeah, both of them actually. Both Kingsman films, Mrs. Doubtfire, Sin City, Halloween on 4K, Coming to America, the Spider-Man through three movie collection, and then Deadpool two. <laughs> I, I just think part of it was I didn't really like Deadpool two as much as I liked the first one. Yeah, uh, there's uh, that. I, I loved it. Oh man, I, I actually watched. Um, I actually watched the Blu-ray recently. I think I think because it adds a few more minutes to it, and they made it a little bloodier, and uh, I just made it a little bit better for me. I was like, man, this is a little crazier, and I like it. So, a lot of fun. And yeah, I just just those movies are fun in general. Um, I don't think I don't think we're gonna get any more of Deadpool, right? Like they've kind of shit can Deadpool, correct? 
I, I don't think they shit canned it, but I think we'll actually. I mean, they'll probably get more. But the, oh, put it like this: I don't think we'll get more, but I don't think they'll tell us we won't get more until later. It just All won't right. come out. Yeah, because I mean, that I I feel like you 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 would you could do like four to five movies of Deadpool. And they would all be, you know, if, if if it's you know like the same Ryan Reynolds character and things like that, they would be extremely entertaining. Uh, but if they've kind of shit canned it, not not going to make it at all, just kind of focus on family friendly bullshit, then ah, whatever, whatever. Yeah, um, I'm glad Detective Pikachu is decent. I think. Okay, would you say that's one of the best uh, video game movies made? Yeah. Yeah, I th- actually, I think that's oh, what wow. started that conversation I was having the other day when for, uh, the takeoff from what we were talking about earlier today about Mortal Kombat. I think that's what started that conversation was is, was that because somebody asked me, like, is that the first ever live action uh, Pokemon movie? And I was like, I believe it is. And I think it is. I think that's the first live action Pokemon. And yeah, uh, yeah I would say it's probably up there in the best video game movies category because – Translating video games to movies doesn't work most of the time, if ever. I mean, I think I think the the, the rating you give that one is is extremely high is extremely high praise for what it is and the quality that they put out and the work they've done to make it immersive, even for somebody who doesn't know what Pokemon are, you know. Um, <clears throat> so the fact that it's that complete of a story and that entertaining um, says a lot, and yeah. especially yeah, because like. God, I can name what is it? Double Dragon was sh- was really shitty. <laughs> Mortal Kombat was perfect, yeah. ten out of ten. So just shut Mortal up. Kombat, Mortal Kombat was was a lot of fun. That movie was a lot of fun. Um, Mario Brothers, obviously, is dog uh, shit. shit. But no, Detective Pikachu was a lot of fun. And uh, like I said, the the opening shot where they show the birds fly by and you realize they're Pidgeys, that kind of had me sold. But then when he gets to Rhyme City. It's kind of like a Times Square type situation where he's walking. There's all these like video boards and stuff, and it's just kind of blown away. They show a thing, and it said, "You know, hero, you know, heroes fire, or hero firefighters from like the news network." And it shows these firemen like battling a fire, and there's a bunch of squirtles sitting there like shooting water at the fire to help them out. And I'm like, I'm sold. This is I'm, you know, this is it. I'm 100 percent on board with this right now because if this was a real thing, I would ex- totally expect there to be squirtles and blast toys and stuff like that helping fight fires. <laughs> and then you see little Charmanders go running by and stuff. And I'm like, I'm in. Uh, let's see. Detective <laughs> Pikachu. How's it doing at the box office? So, I mean, it opened at number two, which isn't, I mean, the Avengers is, you know, steamroller. So far it's got 58 million, uh, domestic and 112 foreign. So 170 already. And it's budgets 150. Yeah. So it's already made its money back. Essentially. I mean, you got to do what? 300 to break even. Right. Isn't that with all the ads? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. So it's probably going to happen. It, what kind of ratings is it getting? Uh, let's see. Uh, Detective Pikachu is sitting at uh, 7 out of 10 on IMDb, 64 on Rotten Tomatoes, and a 52 on Metacritic. So that means you're going to like it, folks, because you're probably a Pokemon fan and it respects it. Yeah, whereas Betty Bitch Tits, that is only cares about Clark Gable movies, but somehow is allowed to review movies is watching that and going, this is stupid. Where Where's the dramatic acting? Have you it's, noticed, too, that no one's bitched that the lead guy's black because he's a good actor? Was it Justice Smith or whatever? Yep. Yeah, he was in... Um, the Get Down. The, the Get Down, yeah. That was a great I fucking miss. Yeah, that, they need to bring that it. back. Yeah, I don't know why the fuck they, they, they took that they, they took that show, but they get they kept Santa Clarita diet for like three seasons. Like Not anymore, it's been canceled. <sighs> well, for... That, well, that's mainly because you can't do zombie shit anymore. Like, it's been fucking saturated. Z Nation ended. Um, for some reason, uh, Walking Dead is still going on for some for whatever thing they have. And they're doubling or quadrupling down on it with movies and all kinds of shit as well. So, uh Yeah, I've given up. Yeah, man. Plus, uh, you know, Game of Thrones is going to shit. Well, that's almost <laughs> over. Yeah. yeah, like one more episode, I think, and then it's it's done. Yeah, yeah pretty much. We'll see how bad know. it is. I mean, well, I won't because I don't know. I don't frame a reference. I don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I've said, I will. I will watch it once it's all done. I feel bad for the people that uh, have been watching it since the beginning. But other than that, I'm not, you know, really invested. Yeah. 
Yeah, I got out after season six. I'm like, I was sort of out of it by around season five because I'm like, damn, this is not as good as it was. And then season six came along. I was like, they're off the source material. Let's see how well they do. Well, they suck. I'm done. (laughs) And so now it's just like reinforcing everything that I thought. I'm like, man, I am so glad that I haven't sat. I didn't watch season seven and then sat there for a year waiting for season eight to come out and had all this hype and investment just to get to where they're at. And especially considering what's going to happen. Cause I went and read the leaks because I'm like, I don't give a shit. And uh, yeah, the way it's going to end, it's going to be like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> Jeez. Well, sorry folks. I'm not, I don't know. Anyway, we'll leave that to nerd Roddick. That's the uh, expert <laughs> yeah. real quick. Yeah. I do want to mention, we're talking about detective Pikachu. We mentioned this on good morning, pop culture, but not a lot of people listen to that show. James Wan produced mortal Kombat movie to shoot later this year. Ooh. Uh, it has been announced that a new film based on the mortal Kombat video game franchise will be shot later this year. The movie will be produced by James Wan and directed by first time filmmaker. Oh fuck. Simon McCoy in Adelaide, Australia. Okay. It's going to suck. Uh, the announcement was made by the premier of South Australia, Stephen Marshall. I'm happy and excited to bring another Mortal Kombat, or another show back to Australia with Mortal Kombat, especially after having such great experience filming Aquaman, said Juan in a statement. Now we get to expe- experience South Australia with its scenic locations and a wealth of artistic talent to work with. It will be perfectly suited for the science action project. There's fantasy action project, excuse me. Uh... I still want to believe because I I grew up loving Mortal Kombat. I really liked the first movie and Annihilation could suck a dick. Yeah. <laughs> so it's such a drastic drop in quality, man. It's uh, it's crazy. I can't think of a a shittier sequel. Well, The Last Jedi. <laughs> but you know, Mortal Kombat's close. Oh man. Yeah. Um, I remember. I remember when Double Dragon came out. I was all about that for a minute. And then I watched, and I was like, "This is really bad." <laughs> it is. <laughs> you had um, world class bullshit. What was it? Exclusive. Uh, um, the liquid metal guy with a fucking like blonde hair and shit, and the weird. Oh, outfit. Robert Patrick. Robert Patrick. Yeah. Like, oh, what the hell happened? To him? <laughs> Good morning. Uh, remember, he didn't really have too much of a career after Terminator. He was very he's true. Wayne's World Two. Good morning, Pop Culture. He was also in The Faculty. Yes, The Coach. And uh, he was in The Sopranos. Oh, shit. Who was he in Sopranos? He was, uh, he owned a sports store and he ended up betting and getting in deep with Tony Soprano and I think Tony Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. But then he lost his family and everything. Mm Mm-hmm. Damn. Yeah. Fuck fuck Tony Soprano. Great character. (laughs) Piece of shit in person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. But uh yeah, I I'm interested in this Mortal Kombat flick. I don't like the direction that they took with the new Mortal Kombat game. I know a lot of people were complaining about the uh Jax ending and stuff like that. I just don't like the new characters. That's really my complaint. I like the cla- like with Street Fighter. I would buy a Street Fighter game as long as they continue to keep uh what is it? Ken, Ryu, Chun-Li, M. Bison, all those, which they do. Uh, and I do own more Street Fighters than I do Mortal Kombat games. I, I will buy a Street Fighter game. Mortal Kombats are just okay. And I used to be the opposite. Yeah. I uh, no, I used to love the I love I used to love those games, but now I just I can't do that anymore. They're too it's too I don't know, it's too much button mashing and all this other stuff. I want to actually have a story and things like that and you know, have a purpose and stuff, so I can't play those games anymore. Yeah, I've given up uh, all that shit. I played the new one at Phil's, but, you know. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, he, uh, <laughs> I beat him, though. I was the first person to beat, to beat him in that game. I'm, sure he's, I'm sure he's real happy about that. Oh, you know he is. It's me. <laughs> I'm the best around. By the way, we need to get uh, Cobra Kai Season 2 and, uh, you know, make that happen, Nick. Yeah, yeah I will. We'll do I'll that, make we'll sure, do that uh, Patreon. make sure it happens. Yeah, I'm down, man. Uh, I, I need to watch it as well because um, I love the first one so much. So um, first one was see. really good. Yeah, I need to see what's happening in season two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. I think folks, I think well, that's the only YouTube that... show that um, is actually sticking around. They're actually investing money into it. So 
I'm glad they are though because uh, the first season was excellent. Yeah, yeah, they're not, and, and and I think whatever shows that are whatever shows are doing good, they're going to keep, but not taking any more on. So, yeah, I mean, I like the idea. I mean, in theory, original series work, but execution wise, they don't. Plus, YouTube has that; it's free. You watch an ad, you watch free videos, type of situation. Yeah. So to charge or, or, or yeah. Or if you, uh, or if you, you know, use yep, Adblocker like Plus on your Chrome browser, right, um, folks, you don't well, get any ads. As always, folks, thank you for watching. Yeah, I don't and, even. Uh, as always, be excellent. I couldn't imagine buying other. anything on YouTube. It just sounds dumb. Well, yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Their their model is weird. It's like everything's free, but you got to watch ads. But if you have an ad blocker, oh, then you don't have to worry about anything. Everything's free. You're not, you're not affecting anything at all. But hey, we're, we're doing this cool thing now where you can pay for stuff like music, you know, for so much a month. Hey, we're hey we got movies you can you can rent or buy on here cool. as well. It's it's really awesome. Hey, we got shows coming out. You have you have to pay for in order to you know get. It's like no, you can't all of a sudden like. I mean that I, I think that's the def. I think that YouTube is the exact definition of honey dicking. Yeah. Because they had free stuff and now they're like, oh, we have better things, but you got to pay for it. And it's like ah, they're not that good. <laughs> yeah, the shit. It's just so bizarre. It's like hey, I paid ten dollars to rent Star Wars on YouTube. Shit, with enough searching, it's there for free. That's very true. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, mean, I think YouTube yeah. should be like the what it is. It's a. I don't want to call it a public utility, but at the same time, it's more than just a streaming thing. It's not really. I wouldn't call it a streaming service. I know technically it is, but it's so much more important. Yeah, it is. It's it, it's very important. Um, and the fact that they all of a sudden are like chart, you know, wanting to wanting for you to pay pay for stuff is is idiotic. It'd be like if you know Facebook is like, hey, they, you know, we're we're gonna have two versions of Facebook now: Facebook, um, Facebook Normal, and Facebook Platinum. You know, but it's gonna tr- it's gonna be you know, uh, I don't know, five ninety nine a month or something for that. People would freak the fuck out. I wouldn't pay for it. Well, did you hear about the U.S. government like wanting to break up Facebook, like legitimately? What? Yeah, they want to break up Facebook. Uh, they want to break up Facebook into parts uh, WhatsApp, Instagram, and Facebook because they own all that stuff, and they want to break them up even further as well. Um, which is weird because, like, you know, it's like I understand what they're wanting to do, and you know, they're real mad at Facebook for not doing privacy. But it's also whenever you watch the U.S. government talk to talk to mark zuckerberg it was the cringiest thing ever because you have a bunch of these old white dudes trying to understand how facebook works and how technology works and they have no idea what the fuck they're talking about and it's like how are you going to regulate them when you don't even understand what they are to begin with like there's nobody young enough who's working in the government who can tell you what you know who can be part of that conversation and tell you what's going on they don't get it and it's just like how are you going to regulate something you don't understand yeah, you know, it's it's like yeah, it's, it's like it's like if they tried to regulate like you know cryptocurrency, like you don't even understand it. How are you going to regulate it? Well, I mean, doesn't make sense. Go ahead, get up. I say, it doesn't help that Mark Zuckerberg is only also four feet tall. <laughs> that video is so hard to watch. <laughs> is he really? I mean, he's probably taller than four feet, but he he looked really tiny sitting there in that chamber. I know. I want a picture of me next to Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, it was almost like they had to, you know, he had to sit on some phone books or he had to get like a booster seat. I think he actually did sit on something, like a pad. Yeah, no, no, no. I remember hearing about that. Yeah, yeah, he had to sit on something to like, you know, look taller. I how think tall that... is, I wonder how tall he is. Okay, Google. How tall is Mark Zuckerberg? 5'2". Mark Zuckerberg is 5 feet 7 inches tall. Ooh. Yeah, but he's oh, worth $67.5 billion. Fuck, you can have almost most of my height for giving me that kind of money. I won't chop off a body part. <laughs> I'll just shrink down for $67 billion fucking dollars. Everyone will find me attractive. I can buy anything I want. Life is great. I don't care if I'm short. Shit, I'll buy everything and make it shorter for me. Fuck tall people. That, that'll that be what i do with that money, Mark. You want to trade bodies? Well, I don't know if I want to be married to your wife. <laughs> I'll trade with Elon Musk. He's at least six two. There you go. There you go. And and plus he's you know he's, sh- he's shooting for Mars, not even the moon. <laughs> he's got hot yeah. women. He's always with so. Exactly. Exactly. He's like if Bruce Wayne barely had a nose. He's a weird looking dude. <laughs> he is a weird looking dude. You ever seen that picture oh, of him man. bald? Yeah. 
I mean, he he bought his hairline back. Yeah, he did. Well, I mean, when you're worth billions of dollars, I think you can do that. Yeah, anything's fun. God damn, he looked so weird beforehand. <laughs> it's highly likely Elon Musk spent over twenty thousand dollars on hair plugs. Yeah, probably, man. Well, they look great for, now. For, yeah, for for him, that's a drop in the bucket. You know, not even. Yeah. Well, is he worth as much as ne- uh, Zuckerberg? Probably not. No, but oh I god, mean, he's... he's not even worth a third of what Zuckerberg is worth. Jesus. <laughs> That makes me laugh so hard. So much for that. I know, right? Well, fuck it. Still a drop. Um, uh, so before we do our last topic for today, or tonight, excuse me, breaking kayfabe here, uh, right. what's a video game movie you want to see? Like, you have to see one. I have to have a video game movie that I have to, it has to happen. Uh, um, if done right gears of war Ooh, excellent Ooh, i would i would go i would go dead space that could be fun. dead space dead space would be really awesome if, if they if they would do it correctly now that could turn out to be fun or that could turn out to be like kmart event horizon yeah exactly like the yeah it, 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 it could either be alien or event horizon like one or the other <laughs> now we're gonna play a game to close out tonight's show would you guys want to play a game of Would You Rather or Explain a Film Plot Badly? Uh, let's do Explain a Film Plot Badly. Yeah, let's do that. I haven't, we haven't done that in a while. Okay, let's see. Uh, here's an easy one. Whoever screams it out first wins. Depressed alcoholic hands off responsibilities to former slave traders so he can hang out with pirates who don't want him around. Pirates, pirates of the Caribbean. Caribbean. Curse of the Black Pearl. Uh, the correct answer is Avengers Endgame. <laughs> All right, Tim. <laughs> Nobody wins. Well, shit. Uh, when here's the next one. When a bar closes for the night, local look locals look for out of towners to quench their thirst. Uh, children of the corn. Tw- uh, twenty eight days later. I'll reread it because I flubbed it up. When a bar closes for the night. Locals look to out of towners to quench their thirst. Um. <laughs> uh, when a bar closes for the night, what? I know it's it's <laughs> it's gonna be something really obvious and stupid too. Shaun of the Dead. Um. Uh, Vampire Diaries. The correct answer is from dusk till dawn. Oh, oh shit! God damn it! <laughs> Here's an easy one. The crazy scientist from Back to the Future is really into road construction. <laughs> Back to the Future 2? Um. Tax? No. <sighs> Shit. I, I'm, 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 I'm going to say taxi. That's all. One floor of the cuckoo's nest. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Oh, shit. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> okay, Kendo, you should get this one right away, hopefully. Small town man goes to big city to split to display his knowledge of cutlery. I need some water. <laughs> uh, under Siege 2, Dark Territory. <laughs> I mean, is that American Psycho? But he's not a small town man. Small town man goes to big city to display his knowledge of cutlery. So you guys don't have an answer. I'm, I'm oh. still going un, under under siege to dark territory. That's that, that's my final answer. That's actually pretty. Yeah, cool. I, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's not a knife. This is a knife. Crocodile. Oh, oh crocodile. <laughs> 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 Oh god, this is really fucking hard. I'll be impressed if you figure this one out. PC and Mac reluctantly team up to stop a computer nerd from control alt deleting important stuff. Um Die Hard 4. Oh my god, that's it! <laughs> Wait, hold on, what did you say? Die Hard, Die Hard 4. 4. Oh my god, that's funny. <laughs> and, the only, and, and you know why? It's because those stupid ass commercials with Justin Long. There you go. So when you said oh, PC and shit. Mac team up, I'm like, 
Oh shit! Sure, yeah, I was like, I bet that's, I bet that's what that's alluding to. Oh god, I remember those commercials, man. So yeah, yeah. so what was, which one was that? Was that a uh, Live Free or Die Hard yeah. or Die Hard? Which which one was Die Hard Four again? Live Free, Live Free, Die Hard. The, the, it, it was once. it was during it was during the 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 PG thirteen PG thirteen era where they're trying to neuter everything and then they had the unrated version which had like more blood on the guy with the fans and he said you became a motherfucker actually those are the only two changes to the unrated DVD yeah, as I say because I've, I've I've got the the box set Blu Ray with all five of the movies in it I have never watched the fifth one and uh, the fourth one I think I've watched maybe twice yeah the the fourth one I I mean the fourth one I like it's it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, I usually yeah, watch fifth. one, two, and three, and then just stop. <laughs> yeah. That fifth one, though. Ooh. Yeah, it's garbage. Ooh. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's hot shit. All right, here we go. Construction worker goes for a hike in the forest, hits on local woman, loses his Walkman, and eventually his job. <laughs> uh, is that Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy? Um, it's the Goonies. I don't know. The correct answer is Fern Gully. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Avatar. Yeah, that's Avatar. Oh, God. Agenda. Uh, let's see. This is a weird one. Nutty Professor Tootsie and Mrs. Doubtfire give birth to an FBI female body impersonator. So let's see. What the hell movie was Eddie Murphy, Dusty, Dustin Hoffman, and fucking Robin Williams in together? Is it Too Wong Fu? <laughs> Thanks for everything. Is that what it is? More? Yeah. Kendo? Is that what it is? No, I, gu- I guarantee it's like a Disney movie. <laughs> Haunted Mansion. I guarantee you that it's not a Disney movie. The correct answer is Big Mama's House. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I wonder how that. I'm trying to. Those three guys weren't in it, but I guess maybe it's like the Nutty Professor was fat. Yep. And Tootsie was a cross dresser. So was Mrs. Doubtfire. There you go. I don't know. Uh, here's an easy one. Estranged father discovers he has a son and tries to pass on the family legacy. Uh, Star Wars. Oh, Empire Strikes Back. Um. Um. Uh, Godfather one. It's the Empire Strikes Back. Hey! <laughs> uh, let's see. We'll do one more. I'll do two more. We'll find something good. Oh, uh, shit. Some of these don't have pictures to go with them, so I don't even know what they are. Uh, here's a dumb one. I won't count this. Paul Walker before Fast and Furious. So, so wait, way more drugs? <laughs> that's the um, That's the hint. The hell was he in before for the Fast and the Furious? <laughs> Slow and calm. No NOS, <laughs> no turbo, no imports. Oh, God, okay. I was just going to say Volcano. He wasn't in that. He became one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Pleasantville. Oh, shit. Oh, shit, he was in that, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Fuck, I forgot about him being in that movie. I've seen that movie more times than I should have. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh... <laughs> you would never know that one. Never mind. Some of these, there's so many Avengers ones. It's like, I get it. Avengers. Ah, here we go. <laughs> Black teens attempt to put local white entrepreneur out of business. Black Panther. <laughs> <laughs> um, it must be a Spike Lee movie. Um, <laughs> uh, get out. The correct answer is drum roll, please. Good Burger. Uh, yeah, I know, right? Uh-huh. Good Burger. <laughs> that movie's been on fucking Netflix ever since the Netflix started. Well, I mean, it's got no place else to go, dude. Yeah, I was just like, I think, I think it's still there. I'm pretty sure it's still there. Yeah. Uh, so let's end with a would you rather question because we got a couple, well, a few more moments left of the show while we're closing it out before people are clicking off going, I'm going to okay. go listen to, uh, you know, something to wrestle with Bruce Pritchard. Okay. 
Would you rather accidentally be responsible for the death of a child or uh, responsible for the death of three adults? Uh, three adults. Yeah, I'll take the adults. Would you rather live your entire life in virtual reality where all your wishes are granted or in the real world? Eh, I'm going to say the real world because yeah. if, all your, if you get everything you want, what's the fun? Yeah, and also it's in virtual reality, which means you've gotten it, but you don't really have it. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's 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 not really there. Would you rather live without internet or live without air conditioning and heating? Air conditioning and heating. <laughs> yeah, I'm picking that I was one too. Say internet. I mean, <laughs> I was say, uh, yeah, I guess air conditioning and heating. Yeah, I need. I'm, I'm addicted. I'm addicted to the internet. I need. Uh, I need I need my Twitter. I kind of need it for this channel. I don't need air yeah, conditioning exactly. or heat. I don't have either on right now. Yeah. I'm very comfortable. <laughs> so, I mean, th- those concerns are just, you know, out the window right now. Yeah. So, um, I don't think we missed anything. Do you guys? I think we covered no. all the big topics no. this week. So, yeah, we hit it hard. Yeah, and we all did it after dark. Mm-hmm. So, fo- oh, God. Miley Cyrus is on the new season of Black Mirror. Jesus, that, just, <laughs> that shows you how the, how good that show's gotten. God, you know what? Let's end tonight on a positive note. You guys ready for some good news? Yes. yes. Alfonso Ribeiro welcomes daughter Ava Sue. Ah, so, uh, good for him. Yeah. So Alfonso Ribeiro's got a kind of a hot white wife. So there you go. And he's got three daughters. So he's what Dion wants to be. Yeah, successful. <laughs> that was a, that's a burn. I love Dion. He's my best friend. No, uh, no. Good for Alfonso Ribeiro. I'm a big Carlton fan. I think he's better than Will Smith in terms of entertainment on the show. And um, yeah, yeah. Because Will Will Smith has gotten a he's little, really, he's gotten a little crazy, got a little crazy. Yeah, I wish Alfonso Ribeiro would have a big uh, comeback. You know what, Alfonso? If you ever hear this, uh, our channel keeps growing. We're gonna have you back on, or we're gonna have you on the show and have you back in the mainstream <laughs> in no time. Yep. If you think your game yeah. show twenty one or bust was a success, wait till you host our game show. So just just keep that uh keep the phone. Yeah, our, our 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 game show is called uh, Bust at Twenty One. Bust at Well, that's a whole another topic for another night. We'll save it for yeah, after that, hours. That's an after that's an after dark topic. Yeah, so folks, <laughs> thank you for uh back in world class bullshitters with all that you do. And uh if you're a patron Go over to patreon.com slash WCBS or World Class BS. That's the name, excuse me. And uh, get ready for your World Class Bullshitters After Hours content. We're going to answer the question that our good friend, uh, not Darth Fatass, Darth Fatass had another topic. This comes from our friend Kevin Spacey. So, Kevin, if you're hearing this ending of the show, uh, by the time you listen to After Hours, you will get your topic read on air. And if you guys want to do that, if you're a patron, just uh, shoot us messages over there and we'll read your topics on air. So... Uh, this is World Class Bullshitters. Every Thursday night, we take a dump on the world of pop culture. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and share it all over social media. If you're listening on digital formats like iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher Radio, and the like, give us a thumbs up, share us, and give us a five-star review. Not because we're egotistical, but because it helps us become more searchable in the index, thus making World Class Bullshitters spread farther and wider. Just, that sounds really dirty. So, uh, folks, I'll be back next time with more. And from Nick, Kendo, Dion, and the like... Be excellent to each other. Dot com.